Hi everyone, welcome to the Anybody and Xsense webinar. Um, to start off, um, I would like, you, like to ask you, please unmute your lines if somehow you were uh, not muted anymore in this webinar. Um, next to that, um, please know that questions can be asked at the end of the, of the webinar in the chat. So when you ask your question in the chat, um, we will read your question out loud at the end of the webinar. Um, and we will answer it also verbally when there is enough time. Um, all questions will be answered. Um, if not verbally, then we will include all the questions um, in the video um, that we will share uh, after the webinar ends. Um, and you can read all the answers in there. So to start off, I would like to introduce the three speakers of today. Uh, first speaker will be myself. Um, my name is Monique Paulig and I am a product specialist at Xsense. Um, next, um, we have Anand as a speaker. He is a product specialist at Anybody. And we have Angelos, and he is a PhD student in the Nemo project. So the agenda for today is, um, in the beginning, I will tell you something about Xsense as a company and our technology, and I will share with you the latest developments in MPN. Um, which includes, of course, our new, uh, our new MVN 2018 release. Next to that, anybody um, will mention their technology and the modeling systems. And, um, and Anand will also tell about inverse uh, dynamics. Um, next, um, Angelos will tell about his, uh, his NEMO uh, research project um, for assessing ambulatory kinetics based on the Xsense MVN data, and he will present his validation results. Um, at the end, um, we have a slide with contact details for anybody in Xsense, and questions can be, um, can be answer, um, asked and answered, obviously. So just to start off, um, Xsense was founded in the year 2000, um, and the headquarters is in Enschede, which is in the Netherlands. Um, and we have a second um, office in Los Angeles, which is, which is a small uh, sales and support office. Uh, in total, Xsense has about 80 employees. And since last October, um, MCube has acquired Xsense. Um, so we're moving, uh, moving towards uh, new technology. Um, so over here you have a, you have a map. Um, you see two big axes which represent the Xsense offices and the small axes all over um, are our distributing partners uh, which help us overcome uh, language barriers, for example. Um, so within Xsense we distinguish between three different markets. So the first market we distinguish is the inertial sensor modules market, also known as the industrial market. Uh, for this market, we provide uh, somewhat bigger trackers um, and those trackers are really um, uh, developed for implementation within vehicles, um, for example, autonomous vehicles, but also drones and helicopters, um, aquatic vehicles, um, and of course, a lot more. Um, the second market is a 3D character animation market. Um, this market uses the same hardware as um, as our biomechanical customers do, for example. So these are based on the MVN systems, so full body motion capture. Um, and the main applications within this market is the film industry, game industry, so pretty much anywhere where you would work with a 3D animated character. Um, moving on to the market that, uh, that I myself work for is the human motion measurement market. Um, this includes a lot of different applications, so we we'll go from ergonomics to biomechanics, sports science, rehabilitation, uh, human-robot interaction is another, uh, is another application. Um, for this market, we have two different systems actually. Uh, you have the MVN product, so which is the MVN Awinda and the MVN Link system, and we have development kits. Um, so pretty much based on standalone wireless motion trackers, um, and these require our customers to develop their own biomechanical model. So they have the liberty to do this uh, based on these trackers. Um, just to show you a few application examples. Uh, so sport research is a really big market for us. 
and um, with the system not uh, not needing any external power supply um, you're really free and able to go anywhere you'd like to so snowboarding or uh, go for kilometers ahead on uh, on your uh, on your race bike um, another example is uh, human engineering so then we're talking about ergonomics um, the environment where you would use a system can be quite challenging. Um, however, the system is frequently used in applications, uh, applications like this. The last example that I want to show you guys at the moment is uh, some design verification. So um, card, uh, card manufacturers are also uh, within our customer base. And on one side, of course, they can use the MVN system in ergonomical analysis for developing their product lines, but they can also do design verification with their designed product. So in this case, a car. So measuring how a person uh, goes into a car, goes out of a car, but even the even measuring kinematic data while sitting in a car, like can he reach everything? Is his body posture uh, proper? Can also be done uh, or is also uh, being performed with MVN systems. So just to tell you something about the basis of the XSense technology is what XSense actually does is we develop sensor fusion algorithms. This is our main IP. So within every motion tracker, you will find a gyroscope, an accelerometer, a magnetometer, and a barometer. Um, what happens next is we perform a sensor fusion. Uh, by sensor fusion, we mean that we fuse the data of these four uh, sensory elements. We fuse that together to, in the end, create a 3D absolute Earth reference orientation. Um, Earth reference means that um, we use the accelerometer and a magnetometer as an as a Earth reference. So the accelerometer is measuring the Earth gravity perfectly vertical down and the magnetometer measures the, uh, measures the heading um, and we, we put our 3D orientation within this earth fixed reference frame. The other items are um, at the moment only implemented in our industrial sensor, so one, I will not be discussing these further. Um, an overview of the MVM products. Um, so on one side you have uh, you have the hardware with the 17 motion trackers on body. Um, it's either implemented in a Lycra suit or with Velcro based straps. Um, and the system is very easy to use. You set up the, you set up the system uh, within 10 minutes. Um, the calibration takes you about a minute. Um, you can use it anywhere. No external power supply is needed. Um, and you can even control um, the software with uh, uh, with an app on your smartphone, for example. Um, next to that, we have the software, which includes um, a sophisticated biomechanical model, so for scaling uh, the body dimensions of your uh, of your app, uh, of your subject. Um, there's real-time 3D kinematic data provided. Um, this data can even be streamed uh, in real time to third-party uh, third-party platforms. In the software, you will get feedback on how your system is doing. If there's a problem or something, the software will actually tell you. And especially since the new implementation of the software, we have magnetic immunity algorithms. I will tell you a little bit more on that in the next few slides. Um, so our software actually got a new name since the new release. So we released the new software a few weeks ago and the new software is called MVN Analyze. So obviously, uh, officially MVN Analyze 2018. That's the current version that we're using. Um, so I mentioned already something about uh, about the hardware. Um, notice also some differences in the in the battery life. Uh, this is all and the difference in, in update rate. This is all due to how the hardware is actually developed. Um, both systems uh, provide actually the same uh, the same data accuracy, but due to the hardware differences and the difference in placing the motion trackers on the body, um, one system might be more suitable or more comfortable to use in um, in an application compared to another. Um, 
And next to that, the software, so MVN Analyze, um, it provides you with accurate and consistent data. So anytime that you use the system, set up the system, calibrate, and the system uh, will provide you with consistent data and high repeatability, let's say. Um, also a new feature in the new software is the 3D Kinematic Solver. So when you've performed your, uh, your recordings, you can open your recording in MVN Analyze and you can perform a, re a reprocessor, um, raising the data quality um, even further. Um, multi uh, Multi-person motion capture is obviously um, still possible in the, in the systems. Um, and um, yeah, so we have partnerships with thir third party platforms and with the software, you can export your motion capture data in a lot of different formats. So for example, we have an MVNX and we have a BVH um, and a lot other things to uh, provide in any, uh, in all the different applications that our customers have. Um, with an inertial motion capture system, there, uh, with any, with any inertial motion capture system, there, uh, there's something that we, that we have called a no zone before. Um, so the no go zone is, um, is an environment which is really challenging for an inertial motion capture system. So all motion capture systems based on the inertial technology use a magnetometer. And the magnetometer get disturbed when there are alternative magnetic fields present. So, they, um, so for example, when you work inside a building, uh, at a construction site, um, when you work especially in a car, uh, um, obviously since a car, it, Act sort of like a magnetic cage. Um, these environments are really difficult to work uh, to work in um, to maintain uh, a stable magnetic field because the magnetic field is not stable. It's not homogeneous. Um, the nice thing is that we have solved this since the new release of MVN 2018. Um, Ten man years of development has gone into there, um, and this is just showing you one of the examples of what the new software can do. So over here, this is, uh, this is an example of the new magnetic immunity. So the red avatar is the legacy avatar um, captured with MVN Studio 4.4 or before. And the blue avatar is the MVN Analyze, so the new MVN Engine avatar. So this is created with a new, uh, um, with a new engine, let's say. So when I play, it will be obvious that the pelvis bone is 90 degrees rotated already. And you see the feet not moving smoothly next to each other, but they're, uh, they're going over each other. So this difference, you see a horizontal drift. When something is drifted that way, uh, most of the time that's a sign of magnetic disturbance because you're losing your horizontal reference. Um, so this is something that you will not notice anymore in the new software. Next to that, we are modeling for uh, for context more than we did before so again the red one is legacy and with a push-up you will see it bouncing up and down while the red while the blue one stays very stable um, so this advanced contact contact editing uh, is also part of the of the new engine so just to show you an overview of what's new in the new mvn engine um, there's a real-time engine, and the real-time engine implements already the magnetic immunity algorithms um, and the reprocess HD. This is the name of our offline solver, so you can reprocess your data to raise the quality of your contact editing, uh, So when you, especially when you have multiple contacts on the floor. Um, skin artifacts are modeled in there. Um, so basically, to perform a reprocess uh, HD will raise your quality um, will raise your quality to the highest standard. Um, also, the 3D positional data has improved a lot. Um, and also in the new software, there's a new avatar and there's a new 3D environment, uh, which I will show you in a second. Um, the user interface has been uh, has been updated. So some features may be, may be at a different location than they were before, but it will be a lot more, uh, lot more efficient. Um, and the contacts are available as, uh, in the MVNX output. So you can even base your gate analysis um, on these contacts, for example. So uh, recognizing, uh, recognizing a heel strike 
based on when the back of the of the foot is recognized as a contact in the MVN software. Um, all nice, but I would just like to show you how this actually looks like at the moment. Um, so just give me a sec, I will switch over to MVN. Over here, so I have a file ready for you. This is just a simple file, just of some walking, uh, which obviously is uh, very relevant, I think, for uh, for this webinar. Um, the live data, of course, is still uh, is still in there, just as it has always been. Just showing some data. Um, over here, you also uh, noticed our new avatar. Um, the new design is mainly to uh, to let it look more uh, more modern on one side but on the other side um, for example you, you notice the the shoulder cap the shoulder cap is actually provided because before the acromion uh, landmark was sort of left and it wasn't really uh, visually attached to the avatar so with shoulder cap over here then also at this point is um, is visually attached to the to the avatar um, so when you have recorded your data you can you can go to file export and export file and choose the bvh exporter if you want to import your data into anybody um, to show the options you can uh, you can go there and then you just click export and then you're done but this is pretty much what i want to uh, want to tell you guys um, now we will switch over to angelos um, and he will uh, he will tell you something about the connection between anybody and uh, and Xsense and uh, what is the serving purpose of that connection. Hi, hello everyone. I'm uh, Angelos Karatsidis. I'm a PhD student at Xsense and the University of uh, Twente. My PhD research is part of NEMO, which is a broader EU-funded initial training network. In uh, NEMO, we are investigating biomechanical interventions in uh, knee osteoarthritis. It has been shown that increased mechanical loading about the knee joint is linked to symptoms and uh, disease progression. But how can we actually quantify joint forces and moments? Traditional biomechanical analysis systems contain a set of cameras tracking a number of uh, optoreflective markers mounted on the uh, subject's skin. In addition to that, we have uh, force plates, which record the ground reaction force and moments. Exxon has been working quite many years now to remove the dependency on external uh, cameras in order to assess the human body kinematics using only uh, inertial measurement units. However, we even though we can do kinematic analysis outside the lab, we still can't do full, fully biomechanical analysis, including also the, the kinetics due to the fact that we are using uh, force plates and we are dependent on that. So why force plates? Force plates are actually, um, they're highly accurate, so they're considered the gold standard for uh, assessment of, uh, of uh, ground reaction force and moments. However, the, they still have quite some uh, disadvantages, which makes them uh, quite expensive. They require a, a gate facility in order to uh, to operate and uh, they may also affect uh, the gate pass pattern of uh, the subject who is uh, trying to record their um, their uh, gate and uh, on top of that they may introduce problems in dynamic inconsist inconsistency in the inverse dynamic solution finally when it comes to inertial motion capture uh, force plates are not uh, very well compatible because they require absolute position, absolute global position, which uh, at the moment uh, is not that accurate in slow motion capture. So what methods have been suggested to remove, to replace the dependency on force plates? Some years ago, the force shoe has been suggested, which is mainly a wearable force plate. It contains two wearable force sensors beneath the, the heel and the toe of uh, uh, the, of the shoes sole, and uh, also two uh, nestle measurement units to get the, the orientation of the, of the shoe. 
this is great. It uh, it uh, achieved quite uh, high accuracy compared to a force blade, but unfortunately, it's not that highly ambulatory, so it's still quite uh, heavy and uh, its weight uh, and height um, influence the natural gait pattern and it's not that uh, applicable for applications such as uh, running or um, stair climbing and so on. So to solve this problem towards a more lightweight solution, pressure insoles have been selected and mainly pressure insoles measure a pressure distribution within the, the sole of, uh, of the shoe and uh, in using machine learning methods via a training database we can actually uh, reconstruct the, the full 3D ground reaction for the moment. However, the repeatability and durability of these systems is quite questionable at the moment, so we can't really depend on, uh, on it. Finally, a recent trend is assessing the external force and moments from the human motion. Uh, the focus of this status has been on uh, the use of optical motion capture systems, which, however, still maintain the special restrictions of uh, force plate systems. And to take this one step further, we take these methods in ambulatory systems, uh, uh, where the kinematics are assessed from inertial measurement units, and therefore the kinetics can also be assessed uh, outside the lab. So conceptually, how do we actually go from kinematics to kinetics? As we know from Newton quite some years now, force is mass times acceleration. Therefore, for a link segment model, the sum of forces will balance the sum uh, of mass acceleration products within these uh, body segments. But in many activities, the the total external force is mainly the sum of uh, the ground reaction forces applied on the right and the left foot. That means that we only need to find a, a, a distribution ratio between a left and right in order to, uh, to assess the, the external uh, force per, per, per foot. So many methods have been uh, proposed in, in the last decade. Uh, one method is mainly based on uh, an empirical function, which depends on uh, gate events and uh, on uh, the observation that uh, the, the transition of uh, its force components follows an exponential uh, decrease. Another method has been uh, proposed is based on machine learning, where supervised learning can be used to map input movements to output forces or force distributions. However, this method is only applicable, these two methods actually are only applicable on uh, either gate or uh, on the database of movements that we have. Finally, a third method is based on a dynamic contact model. And uh, this mainly uh, utilizes a number of actuators on beneath the foot which become a part of muscle recruitment problem, providing a universal solution through principles of uh, muscle effort minimization. This method was developed a couple of years ago uh, within the Anybody system, and that's why Anand from Anybody Technology is here to tell us more about it. Anand? Thank you for the word, Angelos. So before I go into the core of my presentation, I thought I'd start by saying a couple of words about the company that I work for. So I work as an engineer at Anybody Technology. Uh, we are based out of the town of Aalborg in northern Denmark. And we mainly create software for simulating the internal biomechanics of the human body during movements. And our software specifically specializes in studying the effects of a certain motion environment on the human body. So uh, these environments could be something as simple as just a, a flat surface which a person is walking over. It could be the interior of an automobile where a person is seated or maybe getting in or out of, or it could be an exoskeleton that has been strapped on to a human user. So the software that we use to run these simulations is called the Anybody Modeling System. And we of course handle the licensing of the software. And while this is our main product, we do have some other products and services. One of them being the Anybody Exporter for SolidWorks, 
So this is for when you want to design your motion environments in SOLIDWORKS and then test your designs using the human body model in anybody. We also offer training services for our users and also consultancy services in case you'd like us to be a part of your projects. The class of simulations that are run using the anybody modeling system are called musculoskeletal simulations. Now these simulations take in motion data as inputs and this motion data consists of the motion kinematics as well as external forces and the outputs are the instantaneous values of the internal body loads such as the joint moments, the muscle forces and the joint reaction forces. So as for the applications of this technology, we see our users uh, being involved in a range of studies that go from product design optimization to ergonomic analysis, planning surgery and evaluating its outcome, generating load cases for finite element analyses. So this is when you want to know the, the forces inside the human body in order to simulate an implant, for example, using FE software. And last but not the least, just plain and simple good old motion analysis in different motion environments. So I thought I'd introduce you to the, to the main components of the typical anybody simulation. There are three vital components. The first, of course, being the motion data that we spoke about in the previous slide. Then we have the human body model, which is also called the musculoskeletal model. And then you have a model of the environment, which in this case has been taken as a, or taken to be an exoskeleton. So we fuse all three of these into a single man-machine model and then run what's called an inverse dynamic simulation in order to get our results. So now uh, this simulation, it, it has something called a muscle recruitment algorithm. And this algorithm helps us calculate individual muscle forces during the given motion. So these muscle forces and the resulting joint reaction forces might be the final output that you're looking for. In other cases, you may want to pass your data on to other post-processing tools, such as the finite element software that I mentioned in the previous slide. And uh, we do have some ready-made interfaces for this as well, uh, especially for uh, for when you want to when you want to sort of export your loads into Abacus or Ansys. Alternatively, one may want to optimize the design of an environment uh, so as to get some kind of favorable biomechanical outcome in the human body. And these design optimization studies can be run within the anybody modeling system as well. So this is the general workflow of an inverse dynamic simulation, as we've seen. But the formulation of inverse dynamics is a little unique in the anybody modeling system, which also lets us do something rather special. So the external forces, which were previously uh, required as one of the inputs to the simulation, can now be calculated as one of the outputs of the simulation. And this comes in really handy when we are working with outdoor motion capture data from the Excellence MVN system. So as Angelo has mentioned earlier, measuring ground reaction forces in an outdoor setting can be quite challenging. So in this particular study, we actually show how you can predict the ground reaction forces as an output of your simulation by using the anybody model. So for this, I've put down a set of uh, a set of intermediate steps which form our to-do list. So the first step in actually getting these uh, simulations to run is to, of course, reproduce the outdoor motion capture data in the musculoskeletal model. And this is a process which I will term as a motion mapping for the remainder of this presentation. And once you finish motion mapping, you need to set the model up for predicting the ground reaction forces. And the third step is to, of course, run the inverse dynamics analysis, which gives you the required results. So let us look at the first step over here, motion mapping. Now, as Monique mentioned, there are various uh, formats in which you can export your motion data from the Excellence MVN system. And one of these is the BVH file format. And this file contains all the information we need to reconstruct a stick figure model of the human subject from the experimental trial. So it contains, for example, the ground pelvis translations and rotations, which help us position and orient the body as a whole in space. It also contains the joint angles between each of the stick segments in the stick figure. Uh, and it assumes each of these joints to be three degree of freedom spherical joints. So the BVH file in total contains 72 degrees of freedom, or I, I should probably say that the, the stick figure model that is reconstructed 
using the BVH file contains uh, 62 degrees of freedom and the BVH file contains the, the trajectories for each of these 72 uh, DOFs. So the problem of motion mapping is now, uh, is now sort of converted into one where we want to map these 72 trajectories of the stick figure model onto an any body model, which however only has 44 degrees of freedom. So we sort of need to uh, go through some data reduction process in order to successfully map the motion from one model onto the other. So to highlight this challenge further, uh, the main problem is it boils down to the fact that there isn't exactly a one-to-one -one correspondence between the degrees of freedom of the stick figure model and the anybody model. If, for example, we took the elbow joint, we can see that the stick figure elbow has three degrees of freedom while the anybody elbow only has two degrees of freedom. So there is no way that you can actually take the trajectories for these three thetas and set them to be equal to the two alphas. So this is a problem that we solve using a technique that we call the virtual marker method. Now in the virtual marker method, we take the stick figure model and we add certain virtual markers, uh, which are just uh, sort of, we, we, we demarcate certain points on the different stick segments. And you can see these virtual markers over here in, the, in this figure as the green spheres. And we need a minimum of these three, uh, or we need a minimum of three virtual markers on each stick figure segment. So once this is done, the first step is to then scale the anybody model by taking distances between uh, pairs of virtual markers and then setting the, the, the dimensions of the anybody model to be equal to the to the same distances. So once you've done this for all the limb segments in your anybody model, you've successfully scaled the anybody model to match the physical dimensions of the experimental human subject. Once this is done, we can move on to step two, which is the actual kinematics. For this, we first run a simple kinematic simulation of just the stick figure alone. So this simulation gives us the three-dimensional or the, the trajectories of the virtual markers in 3D space. Once we have these trajectories, what we do is uh, place a set of corresponding markers on the model. So for each virtual marker on your stick figure, you place a red marker on your model. And then you run a kinematic simulation with the anybody model. Now what the second kinematic simulation does is that it tries to minimize the distance between each corresponding pair of, or between each pair of corresponding markers. So the kinematic simulation is just, uh, you can think of it as an optimization problem, which tries to minimize the cumulative R over all pairs of markers on the stick figure and the anybody model. So this, uh, this optimization process results in a motion where the anybody model closely mimics the motion of the stick figure model. So in a way, we've actually solved the motion mapping problem and solved the data reduction problem as well by actually using this optimization process. So that actually, uh, that actually means we're done with motion mapping. So we have an anybody model that moves as desired. So the next step of the process is to set the model up for ground reaction force prediction. The first step for this is to add some contact nodes on the bottom of uh, both feet, of course, of the anybody model. And for each node, you have one actuator, which is capable of producing both a normal as well as a friction force. And of course, the forces in these actuators are unknown at the start, because this is, uh, of course, a, a force prediction procedure after all. Uh, Another requirement is that each of these actuators can only produce forces when the nodes actually enter a certain contact volume, which is represented here by the, the gray box. And this volume represents the surface of the floor. So once you've set the model up in this fashion, you can actually run inverse dynamics to predict the ground reaction forces. Now, the way this works is that we previously mentioned the muscle recruitment algorithm that uh, works during inverse dynamics. And the goal of the muscle recruitment algorithm is to use muscles in such a way that the given motion can be achieved with minimum, uh, sorry, with minimum muscle effort. 
And uh, it applies the same rationale when you have these extra actuators. It essentially tries to distribute the, the loads across these actuators such that muscle effort is minimized. So when you have, when both feet are on the ground, it distributes the weight between both feet in such a way that minimizes the effort of walking. So this has been shown to give us uh, fairly good results in the past with uh, when using opti optical motion capture data. And Angelos will shortly present the results that we get with the with kinematics recorded using the Exxon suit. So uh, one more thing to remember is that these, uh, I mean, this algorithm, even though we call it ground reaction force prediction, can actually more generally predict uh, the forces at any friction based contact. So this could be something as uh, this is, of course, just a. Uh, it's, it's again predicting the forces of the feet between the feet and the ground, but the motion is no longer walking. I think this is Tai Chi recorded using an Xsense suit. Or it could be the forces between the hand and the surface in this polishing task. Or it could be the forces between the foot and the foot plate or the back and the backrest in this exercise machine. So that means we are done with ground reaction force prediction as well. Which brings us to the final part, which is actually running the inverse dynamic analysis. So how exactly do we implement this in any body? And I, I'm, I'm sure this is a question that all of you have because I've spoken about the virtual macro method and then I've spoken about ground reaction force prediction. So a natural question is that does a user need to actually uh, to individually carry out these steps each time you run a simulation? And that is what I will try to address here by using uh, a demo of our model. So we do have an Anybody Xsense BVH model, which has been released in the latest version of the Anybody modeling system, version 7.1. And uh, this is a model that has been uh, configured for to the Xsense BVH format, which means if you are an Xsense MVN user, this model should practically be ready to use. And it is also plug and play in the sense that if you have a motion trial recorded by Xsense, you just put it in and uh, hit the buttons that I will be showing you shortly, and the model should work. So this is an example of another motion that was simulated using exactly the same pipeline. But uh, you can see that this is this task is very different from walking. It's actually a sandblasting task in a, in a factory. Uh, one thing that must be remembered, of course, is the accuracy of the data, which becomes more important when you're trying to predict ground reaction forces for highly dynamic motions. So on that note, let us quickly switch over to the Anybody modeling system and actually see uh, have a quick look at how exactly this model works. So this is what most of you should see when you open the Anybody modeling system. This box in the middle of your screen is called the Anybody Assistant and it contains a tab called Demo. And if I switch over to the Demo tab, we see that it contains instructions to install a local version of the Anybody model repository onto your computer. Now the Anybody Xsense model that we are going to be showing today is contained in this model repository. So I would encourage all of you who are using anybody already to, uh, to do this, carry out this step. So in my computer, this, uh, this repository happens to be installed in my documents folder. You can see that over here. And so I'm going to navigate through the folders over here and show you where exactly you can find the Xsense BVH model within the model repository. So I first open up the repository and then I go to application, I go to mocap examples, and then I go to BVH Xsense. And over here, we have a folder that contains uh, where you can actually put all your trials that you wish to simulate. And we have a demo trial as well, which is uh, the one called BVH01. And inside the BVH01 folder, there is a file that is called main.any. Now this is the main any script file for the, for the model that we will be seeing today. So I'm going to open this model up in anybody. And upon doing so, you will notice that the model is structured in the, uh, using three settings files. So what we've done is essentially classified all the information that you need to provide this model into three categories. And these are the lab specific data, the subject specific data, and the trial specific data. So what we will be doing today is to quickly go through each of these three files and see what 
one must specify in order to get these uh, get your BVH model running. So if I open the lab specific data path, you can see over here that there are some settings up here which relate to the units that you use uh, when you exported your motion data from the Xsense MVN system. You need to specify the direction of the gravity vector in the coordinate system of your laboratory. And over here, we have a section where we have actually, we've actually pre-configured all the files in this section for using with uh, BVH files generated by the Xsense MVN system. So if you are an Xsense user, there is very little that you have to do. And these steps essentially cover most of the difficult uh, concepts that we, uh, that we spoke about in the presentation. So for example, this file that is called marker protocol underscore BVH essentially places the virtual markers on the stick figure segment and also places the corresponding markers on the anybody model. Similarly, this file that is called forceplates.any uh, does all the steps needed that we need to uh, set the model up for ground reaction force prediction. So this means that life is actually quite simple because of all this pre-cooked code. So that is all to do with uh, lab specific data. So once we've, uh, once we've actually set these values, we can close this and go over to subject specific data. Now this is a fairly straightforward file where the only information you need to specify uh, are the body mass and the body height for your test subject. So we can close this file and take a look at the final file, trial specific data. And this is where you actually give the anybody model, the name of the BVH file that you want to simulate. So over here, this file is called BVH01, and it was placed in the same folder in which we found uh, this main.any file. And over here, you specify the first and the last frames of the BVH file between which you want to run your anybody simulation. So now that we've actually seen how to set this model up, we can go ahead and load the model. We do that by pressing this load button on the top of my screen. So I'm gonna load the model up. It'll take a couple of seconds and you can track the progress of the loading process using the this message window in the bottom. And you can also see that once the model has loaded, there will be a folder tree that appears in this window on the left. And finally, you'll see the model appear in the model view window on the right. So we are now ready to run some simulations on this model. For this, I will go to the operations dropdown at the top of my screen, uh, hit the dropdown button, and then select run analysis. So this is the operation that will essentially run all the steps that we just discussed right now in the presentation. So I'm gonna hit the play button and the moment I do that, you can see that anybody kicks into action. Uh, this is the first step of our virtual marker method where we run kinematics using the stick figure segment alone. And as we speak, it's, uh, this analysis is calculating the 3D trajectories for the virtual markers that have been placed on the stick figure model. So once this is done, it moves on to the next step of the virtual marker method which is where we have the anybody model with uh, pairs of markers. You can see that there are pairs of red and green markers placed all over. And what the simulation is doing right now is essentially make the anybody model move in a way that minimizes the distances between each pair of markers on the stick figure and on the anybody model. So once that is done, and that will be done in just a second, it moves on to the next step of the simulation, which is actual inverse dynamics. Now inverse dynamics is the most computationally intensive of all the steps that we uh, that we discussed today. So I'm not gonna run the, it's, it's full course, but you can already see that we've, we've run a couple of steps and you can see uh, that there are some forces at the foot. The net ground reaction force vector is appearing here as this red line. So I guess that gives you a quick overview of how uh, easy it is to actually run simulations uh, using Xsense data in the anybody demo model. So on that note, I'm going to go back to the presentation where we have a couple of uh, final words before I give the word back to Angelos. So the new anybody 7.1, which actually contains this, uh, this Xsense BVH model, 
is actually it has been released it also the release also comes along with a, there's a new leg musculoskeletal model which we call the TLM 2.0 model if you are uh, one of the hands-on types and would like to learn more uh, you can actually request a trial license for the anybody modeling system on our website anybodytech.com so our website also contains a full list of publications that have been uh, that have been put out there using uh, the anybody modeling system also you go onto our web page and then go onto the page that says contact this is the page that you're seeing down here and over here you can use these buttons to request a trial license I would like to thank the our funding agencies that actually made this uh, development work possible and these are the MoveAid and the Andy projects uh, from the European Union so on that note I would like to give the word back to Angelos who will continue to show us some more results thank you Juan. Uh, so we performed a uh, a study within the MIMO project in collaboration with uh, Harburg University and Indoor Technology in order to evaluate uh, this method based on uh, uh, a musculoskeletal model driven by inertial motion capture. We collected data concurrently using the Exxon's MDN system, the Qualysys uh, optical motion capture system, and the three AMTI force plates with uh, 11 healthy subjects which who performed uh, this level walking at a comfortable speed. And we have submitted a, a manuscript on uh, the prediction of uh, kinetics using a musculoskeletal modeling and nasal motion capture. So we constructed uh, three different uh, musculoskeletal models. The first model takes uh, input from uh, optical motion capture and uh, by running um, inverse kinematics um, we construct uh, the kin kinematic model and then uh, we run uh, inverse dynamic analysis with input uh, from uh, force plates the second model runs exactly the same analysis with the only difference that the, uh, the external ground action forces and moments are now become a part of the uh, prediction method so we um, from the experimental markers, we run inverse kinematics and then inverse dynamics uh, utilize the ground action force prediction method. Finally, the third method is exactly the same, whereas in this case, we uh, input um, data, we input uh, kinematic data from uh, the BB8 file exported from MBN Studio, and then uh, via, via the marker, virtual marker creation. We run again kinematics and inverse dynamics with uh, ground action force prediction. So we compare these three models, and uh, here are the, the results we get for uh, normal walking. So we see that uh, there are uh, excellent correlations over uh, zero nine for four out of the six uh, components in the degrees of freedom we have in the lower limbs and particularly for all the substal plane uh, joint angles such as the knee flexion, hip flexion and ankle plantar flexion as well as for the hip abduction and uh, also uh, strong correlations for uh, hip external rotation and subtalar aversion with uh, slightly higher uh, root mean square errors. The average root mean square uh, difference was uh, about uh, 5 degrees when it comes to, to kinetics, uh, we compare now uh, three different models as we uh, described before. So mainly the inertial motion capture driven model with predictive uh, ground action force and moments, the optical motion capture driven model with predictive ground action force and moments, and the reference model, which is an optical motion capture driven model with measured ground action force and moments. And we observe here that uh, all three models perform very similarly and if we look at the, uh, the person correlation coefficients of the two predictive models so the IMC and the OMC uh, models versus the our reference model which contains the force plates uh, we uh, observe that uh, the correlation coefficients person correlation coefficients are very similar with uh, 
um, excellent correlations found on the vertical ground reaction force, uh, subtal ground reaction moment, and the anterior ground reaction force, and as well as very uh, strong correlations for uh, the other three components, so for uh, frontal, um, mediolateral, and transverse plane uh, ground reaction force moment. When it comes to root mean square differences compared to um, the actual magnitude of its uh, signal, of its component, we, we see that uh, <clears throat> in most cases the, the signals and the, the performance of the two predictive models are very comparable, so we, we have a slightly um, higher root mean square differences in the inertial motion cap solution. However, uh, this is only um, a couple of percentages more uh, in, in most cases. So in conclusion, we have found very good agreement between the kinematics of optical and inertial driven musculoskeletal models. And joint angle Pearson correlations were excellent for four out of six. Uh, uh, joint angle components and strong in two out of six. Average RMS differences and lower limbs were found around uh, five degrees and uh, the predicted uh, external forces closely matched the force plate uh, input uh, with uh, strong to excellent correlations as well as we found some uh, uh, similar performance uh, regardless of the motion input of uh, um, of the algorithm. So this project was uh, part of NEMO and the collaboration between the uh, Excellence University of Twente, Albert University and Anybody Technology. I'd like to acknowledge our partners at the moment and uh, thank you very much for attending this part. Yes. Uh, thanks Angelos. Um... So just to give you a quick recap of what, what you heard uh, today is um, on one side you have the XSense MVM uh, motion capture system um, and with this system you, um, um, you have captured your 3D kinematic data of the complete body. Um, you can export your data from MVM Analyze to a BVH format and import this into the Anybody uh, modeling system. Um, they created a biomechanical model, um, much more advanced, much more in, in detail, and they will be, uh, they are able to estimate the kinematic data, uh, ground reaction forces, joint moments, um, uh, based on the BVH uh, data provided by Xsense. Um, what is actually the purpose of this is uh, where Xsense MVN provides you with the flexibility to capture anywhere um, also in the laboratory, but also especially outside of the laboratory, go onto the field, um, go to your patient's home, do, do your uh, gait analysis there, or your, your rehabilitation, let's say, or your economical analysis in the factory. Um, import this data into anybody and your natural environment, so the, the, the natural movements uh, within the natural habitat of your subject, um, that data can be imported into anybody and even um, and even create more realistic um, uh, kinetic estimates from that data. Um, so on the next slide we have some contact details. So how you can contact Xsense or how you can contact Anand uh, from uh, from anybody and how you can contact Angelos from the NEMA project. Time is up. Um, so therefore, I would like to close this uh, this webinar. Thank you all very much for your attention uh, for uh, for attending this webinar, and thank you Anand and Angelos uh, for the nice collaborations in uh, in preparing and uh, and doing this webinar. Um, wish you all a good uh, good day, and you will see a recording of this webinar pop up soon. Thank you. Goodbye.